hi and welcome back to Sustainable Teacher. If you are new here, my name is Leticia and I'm glad to meet you. And if you've been here before, I'm happy to see you again. In today's video, we are going to keep going about the topic of mechanisms. But instead of talking about simple machines or linear mechanisms that as we did the other day, we're going to talk about rotary mechanisms. So mechanisms with a rotary movement, like a movement in circle. If this video sounds interesting to you, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. In a previous video, we talked about what is a mechanism, the definition of a mechanism, simple mechanisms, and also the main type of motions that we can find in mechanisms. And today we're going to focus specifically on rotary mechanisms, that is, mechanisms with a rotational movement, like in circles, okay? And we are going to talk about the two main rotary mechanisms, which are valets and gears. Let's start with valets. So, valets are usually composed by two or more wheels and a belt that joins the wheels. Uh, you can see this in, in, in this design, but usually there is a pulley that start if, if we are in a bigger machine of course one of the pulleys will start the movement and the other pulley will just move because of the belt that is joining both pulleys okay so the thing that the, the pulley that starts the movement is called the driving pulley and the, the, the pulley that moves because of the belt is called the driven pulley. This is interesting because we can use pulleys with the same size but also with different size. And if we combine sizes, we can make the movement to go faster or go slower. Okay, if we want to go faster, we want to force multiply the movement. The driving pulley should be bigger on the opposite way. If we start the movement in the smaller pulley that is going faster, of course, because the, the, the perimeter is smaller, the biggest, bigger, the this bigger pulley will be slower. Okay? And this is called force reducing movement or motion. So even if it is a bit complicated, we won't focus too much about this. But uh, there is a speed formula to calculate the speed of it uh, of one of the pulleys. To calculate this, at least you need three data. Okay, so that is the diameter of both pulleys and also the velocity of the driving one, or at least the velocity of one of the pulleys. So I'm gonna show you an example of a pulley system where we have to calculate the velocity of one of the pulleys. Okay, the instruction of the exercise says that the diameter of the driving pulley is 20 centimeters, that is di, and the diameter of the driven pulley is 8 centimeters, that is do or d0, and then the velocity, the speed, like the revolutions, of the driven pulley is 250 revolutions per minute, so RPM, and that is VI. So the question is, what is V, so the revolutions in the driven pulley? So we are going to apply the formula that I showed you in the, in the previous slide, which is VI multiplied by DI is equal to V0 multiplied by D0. So it's a direct proportion between velocities and diameters in each pulley. So we are going to isolate the V0 because this is the value that we don't know and we are going to calculate it. So it's so simple, it's just saying 250 revolutions per minute multiplied by 20 centimeters and divided by 8 centimeters. And your result is 
5000 divided by 8 so that means that the resulting velocity revolutions are 625 rp rpm so as you can guess this is a force multiplying example because the driving pulley was bigger gears are these pieces if they are like wheels but they have teeth on them on the on the border okay and usually when we talk about mechanism with gears we are talking about at least mechanism with two gears they are also called cog wheels and they are together they are joined by the teeth so when when one teeth moves it pushes the other and as in pulleys, we have a driven gear and a driven gear, okay? So the one that starts the movement and the one that moves because of the other. When we have two or more gears, we call them trains. So there are simple trains when it's just two gears or complex trains. If we have more, like three, four, five or 100 gears if necessary. And of course, as in pulley, we can force multiply or force reduce the movement, the speed of the movement. If we want to force multiply, the driving gear should be the biggest one. And if we want to force reduce, the smallest gear should be the driving one. And as in pulleys, we have also a formula to calculate the speed. It's also a direct proportion, but instead of using the diameter, the interesting data in here is the number of ticks and that it said, okay? So in this gear exercise we have a simple train with two gears there is a driving gear and a driven gear and the, in this case the driving or input gear the diameter even if this data this uh, value is not really important for the formula is, it is written in the exercise so I'm gonna show you that sometimes some data are not necessary like in this case and it was 10 centimeters but of course we need the number of teeth which is 8 for the driving or input gear in the case of the driven or output gear the diameter is 30 centimeters as you can imagine right now in this case we have a force reducing movement because the output gear is bigger than the input gear and the number of teeth if of course if the, the perimeter is bigger the, the diameter is bigger the perimeter is bigger the number of teeth will be also bigger and is 24 and there is one missing value that we also need which is velocity of the driving of the driving gear which is 750 rpm so now we have all the data that we need to apply our formula. Let's see the data we need. So the driving gear velocity is Vi. The number of teeth of the driving gear is Zi. The mm, driven gear velocity is the question and that is Vco or V0. And the number of teeth in the driven gear is 24 and this is Z0. So now let's apply the formula, which was Vi multiplied by Zi equals to V0 multiplied by Z0. So the thing is that, we, again, we isolate V0 and if that is Vi multiplied by Zi and divided by Z0. So that is seven and 750 rpm multiplied by 8 teeth and divided by 24 teeth teeth even if it is not a unit disappears so the final result is 250 rpm So now that we know how to calculate the velocity in basic gear, I have to tell you that there are more type of gears and of course you can, you can stay calm. We won't learn how to calculate velocity in all of the examples.
and that's it for today. I hope that you understand the rotary mechanisms and the formulas to calculate velocity. Leave in the comments if you ever learned something about the valleys or the gears. If you ever thought that in your bicycle there were gears or you thought that gears were just something like really complex and um, weird to you, I don't know. Everything you want to say, leave it in the comments. And of course, see you soon. Mm -hmm.